everyone! This is a special episode of Fire Breathing Kittens. I'm the Game Master for the upcoming session that uses the rules for Salvage Union. This episode is a summary of what I learned after reading the rulebook. Hopefully this will be a handy guide for how to play for my players, will help me organize myself, and will be useful for you listeners too who are looking to play Salvage Union yourselves. The general idea of this system is that you and your mech are exploring the wasteland of a ruined civilization. You have friends who also have mechs and are exploring with you, which is good because you wouldn't want to be alone, not with all those bio-titan behemoth monstrosities, amalgamations of creature and machine, roaming the scrap-filled battlefield remnants. Can you salvage something useful from this scarred region, creating opportunity from debris? Let's find out in Salvage Union. How to attack. So I'm going to describe the general idea first and then dive into specifics. The general idea is that to attack, first you choose a target you can see who is within weapon range. Next you roll to hit. If you successfully hit, then you inflict your weapon damage. The Game Master subtracts your weapon's damage from your target's either hit points or structure points. Biological things like pilots have hit points, and constructed things like mechs have structure points. Most player characters start at 10 hit points. Most level 1 mechs range from between 9 and 17 structure points. Most allied non-player characters have 4 hit points. Tech level 1 weapons deal between 1 and 4 damage per hit. That means that on average it takes as few as 3 or as many as 10 strikes to reduce something that had 10 HP down to 0, at which point they fall unconscious and are at the mercy of a mortal blow or not. Now let's discuss specifics. Salvage Union uses a 20-sided dice, also called a d20. There are no modifiers or bonuses to add on to the roll. If you get a 1, you fail horribly. You miss the target you were attacking, you suffer something called a setback with the capital S, and a severe consequence of the Game Master's choice happens. So don't roll a 1. Setbacks can affect your health, reputation, items, environment, etc. For example, with health, you could get hurt, such as taking 2 HP damage out of your 10 HP total, or roll on the critical injury table, or your module is destroyed. Module is things like your weapon. Some examples that affect your reputation are that you could lose an ally, a bounty could be put on your head, you could realize that you broke a law and are now cast out of a community. Example setbacks impacting your inventory are that your weapon jams or runs out of ammo, you lose one of your treasured possessions, or your weapon's effectiveness is now less than it should be. Example environmental setbacks are that your path is blocked by debris, or the town you were heading to got decimated by biotitans before you could get there, or enemies are now flanking you. Those are just some of the potential consequences of rolling a 1 on the d20. If you roll between a 2 and a 5 on the d20, you fail and still face the setback with a capital S, but without the severe consequence part of it. If you roll between a 6 and a 10 on the dice, then you succeed at what you were trying to do, but you face a tough choice. Your Game Master will give you a choice between setbacks. If you were attacking, you still hit, but you're also going to have to make a tough choice. If you roll an 11 to a 19 on the dice, you succeed. If you were attacking, you hit your target and you deal standard damage, and if you weren't attacking, you achieve your goal without any compromises. And lastly, if you roll a 20 on the 20-sided dice, you nailed it! You manage an outstanding success and may achieve an additional bonus of your choice as well as your intended action. If you were attacking, you can choose to double your damage or do an appropriate bonus effect. Here is an example of how to attack. You're approaching a scrap heap, preparing to harvest it in your mech. You reach out your mech's left hand. Like a pit trap spider, an amalgamation of machine and biology clamps down upon your mech's left hand. It starts to drag your mech and you into its pit. You attack the enemy bio-titan with your mech's chainsaw arm. You roll a d20 to see if you hit. Your dice yields a 10, so you do succeed in hit, dealing 2 damage with your chainsaw arm to the pit trap creature machine. But your game master gives you 2 setbacks with a capital S to pick from. Either 
The module on your left hand was damaged by the bite, and your rigging arm module now takes three energy to use instead of its normal two energy. Or, something unspecified and negative has happened in the town you were heading to. That's an example of an attack in Salvage Union. You can also roll that d20 to do most skill actions you would do in other role-playing games, such as convincing an NPC to tell you something, or intimidating an enemy. If you're interested in sneaking, stealing, and performing similar rogue actions frequently, consider the Ranger skill tree, where you auto-succeed at those activities if you take the Infiltration Advanced move. Distances. Distances in Salvage Union are close range, medium range, long, and far. So there's four of them, close, medium, long, and far. Close range is like you can walk up to it in just a second or two. Medium range is you could throw something and hit it. Long range is you can still see it with your unaided eye and discern its outline. And far range is outside of the accuracy of most weapons. Actions. Salvage Union defines lengths of time by using a word and then the word action. A downtime action represents one week. A long action takes about one hour. A short action takes about 10 minutes and is too long to be used during combat. A turn action is something you could do in a minute or so. Yes, you can do a turn action in combat as your whole turn. One turn action is needed for a mech to start up or shut down. A free action doesn't take up much time at all. Talking to other characters is a free action. And lastly, a reaction is less than 10 seconds and is so fast that someone could react on someone else's turn. Let's talk about initiative. You and all of your fellow players and allied non-player characters act together in what is called a group. The enemy band of five Wastelanders that ambushed you also count as one group. This first round, the Wastelanders ambushed you, so they go first. One of them takes their action, firing a ranged attack at the players before ducking behind the scrap heap. Then after they're finished, if you're still alive, it's the player's turn. One player can move and take their action, and as many free actions as you'd like. Then it's back to the enemy group, where again one enemy can attack your group. Then back to your group, where one player character can move and perform an action, and as many free actions as they like. It goes back and forth between groups like that. Once everybody has acted, the round is over. At the end of the round, one player character represents everybody and rolls a 20-sided dice for your group. They consult the group initiative table to see what the next round is like. If that one representative rolls a 1, well, you're ambushed again. We interpret that to mean the Wastelanders attacked you and then hid and you don't know where they went. Imagine an Old West movie with a shootout and you can't see where they're coming from. If your group representative rolls a 2 to a 5, one NPC of the GM's choice, probably an enemy, gets one turn in, and then play passes to the player group. If your representative rolls a 6 to a 10, then one NPC chosen by the player's X first, then the player group can go. On an 11 to 9, one player chosen by the player characters can act first, with play then passing to the enemy NPC group. And lastly, if you roll a 20 on the group initiative table, two pilots can act before the enemy group can go. Character creation. You're going to be creating three different things in Salvage Union. A pilot, a mech, and a crawler. The pilot is your character. The mech is their vehicle, or steed. The crawler is a slowly moving setting, like a cruise ship. The pilot starts with their appearance, 10 hit points, 5 ability points, 6 inventory spots, a core class, a starting ability from your core class, 2 tech 1 pilot equipments, a call sign, a background, a keepsake, and a motto. That is quite the list of things that you have to build, so let's build one together. Let's build an example pilot named Sadie. She's a shy Macritus elf with big old ears sticking out horizontal from her silver hair. Sadie starts with 10 hit points, 5 ability points, 6 inventory spots, 
the core class of hacker, and the starting ability of, well, actually... This starting ability lets her ask questions about systems, modules, or technology. When she asks a question, her player rolls a 20-sided dice, also called a d20. On a 20, she can ask 5 questions and get legitimately true answers. From 11 to 19, she can ask 3 questions and still be getting truthful answers. From 6 to 10, she can ask 2 questions and get one true answer and one false answer. From 2 to 5, the player would have to make up an answer to their own question. And on a 1, everyone knows you didn't know the answer. Sadie has got two Tech One Pilot equipments. You can browse through the list of equipment. There's a lot to pick from. So, for Sadie, let's pick a first aid kit and a portable comms unit. The first aid kit has three uses. It lets Sadie give a creature of her choice, in close range, three hit points as a turn action. The portable comm unit lets Sadie communicate with anything else that has the communicator trait within medium range as a free action. Both of these items take up one inventory spot, out of her six total inventory spots. Inventory spots are also taken up by weapons, which take up one spot, and scrap, which takes up three inventory spots. So make sure to keep track of how many open inventory spots you have left. Continuing, Sadie gets a call sign of Silver Mouse, which people can call her on their communicator. She gets a background of Corpo Exec, which represents that she comes from being at the top of its hierarchy, and that something caused her to stray away from the luxurious life it gave her. Her keepsake is one of her mother Gianna's earrings. She's looking for the other one. And her motto is, Be kind, for everyone you meet is fighting a hard battle. You can spend your five ability points on anything you want, so have some fun browsing through the things that cost AP. There seem to be a wide variety of ways to customize your pilot. Advanced and legendary abilities can be unlocked at high levels. For my players in my upcoming game, I recommend choosing one of the career paths or mech builds that gives you access to the salvaging trait so that you can participate in salvaging. See page 248. So there's your pilot. Second, you're going to be building a mech. Your mech starts with 20 tech 1 scrap. You can spend this scrap to pick your chassis, which will come with its own stats and ability. You can also spend this scrap to pick your Tech 1 systems and modules. And also choose your mech's quirk, appearance, and pattern name. Let's build an example mech. Sadie's mech starts with 20 Tech 1 scrap, which you use as a currency to buy the mech based on its salvage value, which is like its cost. The symbol for salvage value is a gear, so if you see a 10 inside a gear with a lot of teeth, that's a salvage value of 10. Sadie spends 10 Tech 1 scrap buying the 10 salvage value chassis model called the Spectrum. That's half her scrap, so she writes down that she has 10 remaining to spend on systems and modules. Systems and modules include things like weapons and salvaging tools, so you might not want to spend all of your salvage value on the chassis alone. That's like having a computer without a monitor. The Spectrum chassis has a bunch of stats, so she writes those down too. The Spectrum comes with 17 structure points, which are like hit points for a mech, 11 energy points, which you can expend to do things, and you can run out of energy, 3 heat cap, um, you don't want to reach your heat cap, 7 system slots, and 4 module slots, those are for upgrading your mech, putting stuff in it like weapons and salvaging units, and 6 cargo capacity, it's a tech level 1 unit, it has a 10 salvage value, and all of those stats go on the mech's character sheet. The symbol for systems and modules is a triangle, so if you see a 1 inside a triangle, that means it takes up one module slot. From this example, this mech had a maximum of 4 module slots. Energy points are something you run out of, and heat cap is something you don't want to build up to, or your mech can overheat. The mech also comes with an ability, which for this example is called Data Scanner. The ability lets you spend two energy points to scan a single object in close range. It can be a mech, system, module, vehicle, creature, artifact, structure, the fauna, the flora, anything. You can ask two questions about the object and the answers given must be true. 
and you also now have its blueprint if it was an intact mech chassis system or module. This is a neat combo with Sadie's other ability. She's going to get so many rewards for asking questions during the game. Maybe having all these good possible outcomes will motivate her to overcome her shyness, speak up, and ask that question. If she can just overcome her fear of new people enough to ask a question, so many good things will happen. It's neat when mechanics encourage role-playing. Next, she picks a quirk for her mech. For example, the cockpit has far, far too many buttons. And an appearance, which is that it has spiky bits. The better for extending to probe objects it's investigating. And lastly, she gives her mech a pattern name. Tickle Monster. And voila, Sadie has a mech. For my players in my upcoming game, I encourage you to take a look at the rigging arm on page 167 so that you'll be able to participate in rigging salvage actions. See page 249. Triangles are how many system or module spots you need open to take it. The T number is the tech level, and the number inside the gear is the salvage value. Lastly, the party is going to be sharing a crawler. Someone, possibly the game master, will pick a crawler type, write down its ability, stats, bonuses, structure points, upkeep, and upgrade cost. Choose a Tech 1 weapon system for your crawler and give it a name and tag number. Name the crawler's NPCs and give them each their own background, keepsake, motto, and 4 HP each. Your game master might hand everyone a page with their crawler information on it before the game starts. If you're a player in my upcoming Salvage Union game, that's what I'm going to do, so you don't have to build the crawler yourself. But since this is an example of how to play Salvage Union, let's build an example crawler together. A crawler is basically a roaming settlement. Imagine a tour bus with all the members of a band on it, or a cruise ship, or a generational space flight. In this example, we're building a trade caravan crawler, so imagine a series of covered wagons rolling out from St. Louis to head to California back in the 1800s. This crawler has an ability, Improved Trading Bay. When you begin to roll for what is available in the trading bay, use an improved table instead of the one generally available to most players. It also comes with an NPC who is an experienced trader. For example, Kyrule Smith is on board, and they're really good at getting deals on boats. They've got a keepsake of cool person hair gel, I guess, and a motto of, quote, success is the best revenge. By simply being present... Kyrule Smith reduces the cost of any mech chassis, system, or module available in the improved trading bay by one scrap, with the minimum cost still being of one. And they have 4 HP, so if you let them die, you lose that bonus to your trades. Righto, we're done with character creation. We've created a pilot, we've created a mech, and we've explained how to build a crawler, which I imagine might be done by your game master. Pushing a mech. You can push your mech to add two heat to it and re-roll a d20 dice. To do that, first resolve all the effects of the re-roll. Then add two to your mech's heat and roll a heat check d20 dice. If your mech has less heat than the number you roll on dice, it's fine. If your heat is equal to or greater than your roll, then your reactor has overloaded. Roll on the reactor overload table. Your mech might shut down, blow a module, or explode and be completely destroyed. That's no good. To reduce how much heat you have, shut your mech down and let it cool off for one hour. After the hour, heat resets to zero. But don't shut your mech down just anywhere. While it's shut off, it's vulnerable and takes twice as much damage from attacks. Here is an example of pushing. A behemoth biotitan dragged one of the party members back to its lair and has spun it up in a silk cocoon to eat it later. The biotitan is currently sleeping its physical damage off in one corner of the lair. You are trying to sneak your way into the lair to rescue your friend unnoticed. You roll a d20 to make a stealth check. The d20 lands on a 4 which means you fail and are about to experience a setback with a capital S. Based upon the role-playing situation, you are guessing that the GM is going to do an environmental setback 
where the behemoth Biotitan wakes up. But you know you're not a match for that machine creature. That's what you told your friend earlier, the one who's now in a cocoon. Even though your mech only has a heat capacity of three, and pushing would add two, you think this is worth it, and you push your mech. First, you re-roll that d20 dice. Success! A 15! You succeed at what you were trying to do, which was to sneak up to that cocoon without waking the behemoth. You achieve your goal without any compromises. Now that we have resolved the effects of the re-roll, we add two to the mech's heat, and we roll a heat check. You haven't reached your mech's heat capacity of three, so that's good. If you had, you would have to make a heat check every turn you start at your heat capacity. But you're not there yet, so it's just one heat check for having pushed and re-rolled the dice. You roll for the heat check and consult the table on page 235. You get a 12, and you see that from an 11 to 19, your mech reactor has overheated. Subtract 2, the number of heat you currently have, from your structure points, which are like hit points for mechs. The mech shuts down and gains the vulnerable trait, where it takes double damage from any attack. It will reactivate at the end of your next turn, and won't decrease how much heat it has until you shut it down and let it cool off for one full hour. But in this example, pushing the mech was worth it. You're at the cocoon with your friend and can begin to cut them free, the bio-titan behemoth none the wiser. And the very last thing I'll talk to you about is how to salvage. Players who possess the salvaging or rigging traits can area salvage, mech salvage, scrap, repair, patch up, load, mount, and craft. If that includes you, it's not a bad idea to print out or screen capture pages 248 and 249, which lists your salvaging moves. There are five types of item you can find in the wasteland that can be useful to you. Chassis are the core frame of the mech, the part that has all the stats. For example, a jackhammer, mule, and kraken are three chassis good at mining, carrying cargo, and swimming, respectively. Systems are hardware that can be mounted on a chassis, such as an excavator arm or a weapon. Modules are software that you can upgrade your chassis with, like a better sound system or a faster RAM. A vehicle is something like a carriage or a wagon that isn't quite a mech. And lastly, scrap is that very last working part pulled from an otherwise completely broken junk heap, a component that might be useful for crafting something one day. The wasteland leaves objects in a range of conditions, ranging from intact, to damaged, to destroyed. To salvage an area, roll to area salvage, and if you're successful, reduce the supply of that area by one. Most areas default start at five supply. Chassis, systems, and modules take up as many cargo spots as their salvage value number. Each piece of scrap you harvest takes up one mech cargo spot, or three pilot inventory spots. And that's it! You're now prepared to play Salvage Union. Hopefully this little rules chat helps my players build their characters and understand combat a bit. And for everyone listening, hopefully now you're excited to find the Salvage Union rulebook yourself and play a game with friends. I'm looking forward to playing Salvage Union in an upcoming adventure!